So we've done this once before with the Fred video and obviously I'm a YouTuber about to attack another YouTuber, but I do want to plant this disclaimer here that this isn't a direct bash at Anthony or Ian or anybody else who made this project. It's just a matter of, I like ironically watching some terrible movies and the end product was a little bit of a movie that was less than average. So if you're a fan of Smosh or even are the boys, please don't take this as some YouTube drama. I'm just enjoying a movie that's a little less than average. Now, with that being said, Ugh, Daz, you know the idea, you know. I know, I know, get in the movie, I'm going. Also, I forgot to film Calc reactions this time around. You what? Oh god, you're such an amateur! Why am I the one out of the two of us that's stuck in screens? This is ridiculous. Yeah, sorry about that. It's the Smosh movie! I loved Smosh, remember it fondly back in 2011 with like the Zelda rap, Pokemon movies, or the yearly food fights. God, has it really been 10 years already? Wow. Still, I left pretty early in the game, and by 2015, I was long gone. But even still, corporations had long brewed in the background, so it's no wonder someone tried to reap the benefits of literal billions of YouTube views. So though I can still find enjoyment from the arcade archaic and slapstick style of the old Smosh days, let's see just how a bigger budget and an extended runtime can turn out for the duo. Fred ended up as an elongated screaming mess, so I wonder how it'll go this time around. <laughs> right off the bat, and that company name alone is immediately dated. Oh, I love it. Ooh, that didn't age well. Hmm. Shut up! And that's just a classic. Oh! CG? That certainly wasn't what I was expecting. It's a montage of the two's lifestyle choices, and crammed with references to, you know the ones, Jenna Marbles, React, Shane Dawson, Young Markiplier, and I guess you could technically say it foreshadowed Coco Melon. Funnily enough, I get some seriously samey vibes to Fred here. I mean, it makes sense because it's the same location-ish, but jeez. So, within the lore of this universe, Anthony is the grown-up of the two, having a job as a pizza boy that admittedly kicks him down at every opportunity, whilst Ian is the stay-at-home, immature one who just binge-watches YouTube videos all day. Hey, that's not me! I watch Twitch streams as well! Totally different. And the first real scene starts with Ian... watching a sexy butt massage. Okay. Technically, you could say they're ahead of their time with simps and parasocial relationships. And Anthony confronts him with some weird acting cuts too. Ah, I knew it! You can't keep doing this! You can't just order a pizza every time you need a ride somewhere, okay? Is this an issue with YouTube acting or the directing? Or maybe just not being in sync with the Smosh style? I don't know, but this scene has jokes! Some sound like a student film script that's okay. You deliver pizzas. I work in food distribution for a multi-million dollar company. Some are not bad with execution too. Unlike you, I moved out of my parents' house. Into my parents' house. And some? I can't, I'm fasting to fit my, my new pair of jeggings I just got. Yeah. Lack the funny and the comedic timing to boot. Just a little longer on that awkward face, that's all you need. You're gonna see a lot of that third type of comedy. Has Smosh always been this unfunny? I don't think so. Even when watching like Food Fight 2011 now, the style and gags hit so well. I almost feel like it's a crime for how realistic this movie took its direction. So the two disagree on life. Anthony thinks Ian is too immature, whilst Ian thinks Anthony is working too hard for his crappy life. There's a joke about Steve Austin being in the mirror, we're gonna skip it. Actually, we'll do some skimming for everything for a bit. So, the two drive to the arcade with a name you shouldn't misread, some kids laugh at Anthony's cringy car, a background kid stares at the camera, Ian TikTok dances at a fake Pokemon song before that's a cringy thing, Anthony gets embarrassed wanting to impress girls, the two split over disagreements on how reality sucks, and those kids literally poop on Anthony's car, embarrassing him more. Quality. Really, it's all just to show Anthony's arc of not wanting to be the same kid he was before. And then we get the mailman scene. Is that Harley from Epic Mail Time? God, didn't they like quit YouTube a few years ago? Actually, they're still going. What a blast from the past. Anyway, as the mailman, he's pretty angry and has a grudge against Ian. Who knows why? Anyway, time for some actual plot. They've been invited to a five-year reunion with their school. Is that a thing? And Anthony wants to impress his old crush. Time for a flashback. Alright, fine. 
get it over with. See, I actually like when they lean into their smoshier comments. So it's your cliche moment. Anthony's awkward around girls, though this one is clearly into him. They part ways and he accidentally Star Wars kids his way into manslaughter. You know, the usual. And the embarrassment makes him stand Anna up. But the wrench in Anthony's plan comes in when an old video of him being cringy and unintentionally lodging a mic up his butt, remember we're still in Smosh World, so I guess this is on brand humor, appears on the reunion forum. Another embarrassing video? We sure this isn't the Fred movie? And there's only one way to fix it. So all you have to do is, is go, to go copy strike them remove from YouTube before Anna sees the video. I will say though, I think my favorite jokes are in the side comments Ian says in this one scene. It's so simple. Listen to this. God, I can't believe this is happening to me right now. Well, I mean, it's not happening to you right now. It happened five years ago. All right, dude. If you don't go, I don't go. Mostly because I don't have a car. Anyway, here we are! Am I gonna try something a tad different here? I've been really soaking time into my second channel. There you can find stream highlights of trailer analyses and content I've just really been wanting to make on the side. I've got several threads of content from full streams on Twitch and our archive channel, and hashtag does reviews where you can find them intermixed with this channel stuff. It's anything with the red text. But of course, that marketing isn't perfect. So if you're interested in some of that, I implore you come visit our freshly rebranded highlights channel. Soon we're uploading our rabbit hole of old YouTube videos that I liked years ago. It's kind of topical to Smosh, right? It would really mean a lot if you supported it. Link at the top of the description. And yeah, here's a quick flash of everything else we do. Twitch also got slightly rebranded and help us in the algorithm and all that fun stuff. Gosh, can you imagine if the YouTube logo looked like that? What is it in reality? Ah, that's the artistically void YouTube I know. Grace is the receptionist and it's time to meet the CEO of YouTube. Sousa, Mr. YouTube, that's his name. All right. Bashing other iconic overlords like Jeff Bezos, uh, Joey Amazon, of course, Ted Google, Roger Facebook. I wonder how he feels nowadays with Tim TikTok or whatever. So after a bunch of exposition, we learned that in order for the boys to fix their problem, they would have to change the video from inside YouTube. This is gonna turn into some wacky time travel shtick. Of all directions to take this movie, this wasn't what I expected. What, was the director obsessed with time travel movies or something? So one brief strangely edited gag of sexual harassment later from before the days of cancel culture and the boys leap through a portal into YouTube. Eh, you get used to it. And they're dead on impact. Time for some callbacks. First, it's the advert they hate, then a bear attack video? And you know, I think YouTuber movies are just doomed to be elongated screaming. Huh. But they can really stretch their style now. There's a resolution gag on the actual website as well as having their phones magically pop items into existence now. Cool. If only they could magic up some better VFX. Oof. There's a brief scene with Markiplier, which, you know, looks stupid, but it's fun. And then we're back at their house, because Ian filmed the video in secret. What gets wacky is that even though they're inside a YouTube video, the world still interacts with them. Freaky. Anyway, it's revealed that Ian pranked the mailman with milk balloons, hence the grudge. Man, are we sure Ian wasn't just a representation of Logan Paul? Are all these YouTuber movies connected by themes? The mailman punches R. Ian in revenge and the boys are motivated with their new manipulative powers. And while the movie could just take us to, you know, the main plot, we've got a bunch of cameos to get through first. It's Jenna Marbles, certainly different to the 2021 version. She spouts more exposition about how if their phones lose charge, they're stuck in YouTube forever because the world just doesn't have phone charges anymore. She knows all this because she herself is stuck here, having to deal with her clone. Now wouldn't that suck? And since the boys struggle to navigate, they choose to split up. Anthony gets a furry party and Ian gets butt massage girl. Creepy. You know, I have a couple of questions. Where's the camera in most of these videos? And also, how can she remember his comments when this version of her hasn't uploaded the videos yet? Why do these people never care about the video they're currently recording? Uh, still, she's always been into him, apparently, because, you know, that's a real 13-year-old fantasy. Meanwhile, Anthony ends up with Steve Austin. Seriously, why am I finding so many connections to the Fred movie? It's a basic pep talk scene, again. And following that, Anthony ends up in Anna's vlog video. So, like, also, in compilation videos, would the boys be jumping through time? We never get this answer. But surprise, surprise, Anna liked Anthony too. Back to Ian, getting a butt massage himself now, and there's a joke that's only in the trailer. 
Is it weird to say the closer this guy gets to my butthole, the better it feels? So Anthony pops up, they argue over Ian wanting to live in this non-reality, the video loops for the first time in this entire film, and the boys bounce. Now it's time for the main plot. It's the graduation video, where the boys show up, have no plan, and do... absolutely nothing. This is a real dumb and dumber storyline. But we learn Ian is the one who actually filmed the thing, wanting to remind Anthony how fun he used to be. Five years preemptively. They fight again, and it's back to Coolback Land again. Crashing a soldier reunion, a grimmer spin of David at the Dentist. Man, I am old. A classic cat video with a genuine smoshy joke. Oh, look at the cute little kitty. And then we're back again, now with Ian doing something after a change of heart now, and going to knock Anthony out. And what follows is actually a fun gag I like. Earlier we heard them say, I'm too tough to knock out. Uh, right. And now it's true, not even a brick has taken him down. So everyone bursts into a fight, the boys' batteries are low, and their phones refuse to teleport them home because, done, done, it was Steve YouTube all along. I've been kind of skimming over it up to this point, but they've had a very topical Siri assisting them the whole time, called Deary. I wouldn't mention the connection if they hadn't spent an uncomfortable amount of time pointing out that it's a Siri ripoff in a very unfunny sequence. Still, it was Mr. YouTube all along, which makes things weirder considering Deary was romantically interested in Anthony, who's only like five years out of high school. This cancelling thread just gets longer and longer. So anyway, with no more help from Deary, they have to get back to the portal manually by going through their search history. All the while, Mr. YouTube activates some super suit. Eventually. Giving him the powers to explode cats, become people, and predict deepfakes before they were a thing. Alright. The boys continue backwards, confessing to Anna, which doesn't change reality somehow, being complimented by Steve Austin despite the fact he shouldn't have a memory of them, calling furry sickos, and looping back to Jenna Marbles and Markiplier. You know, now I'm just getting the vibes of Amazing Bulk. This is exhausting. And with some buffering on Steve's end, he chooses to jump into YouTube himself. You can see where this is going. Wait, wasn't the portal in the sky before? Oh, whatever. Steve confronts them, only to be hit with the first video's content, a bear attack. Though, hey, I really like that death scene, you know. Smosh! Ha ha! And the two get back to the real world, crappy VFX and all. L literally, Anthony's new intro has like better- anyway. And you'll never guess what happens, the world has changed. They now have a big mansion, though it's somehow the exact same address. Ian has butt massage girl as his girlfriend. Don't know how that worked out though, if their new clone video kicked them onto a path of success, foregoing the whole common obsession five years later. And Anthony has not Anna, but 30 unnamed bikini model girlfriends. I mean, I guess, yeah, this is a fantasy of your average 13 year old boy. Still uncomfortable though. Also though, again, the editing on this is choppy and weird. <laughs> nice! Oh my god, these, these are all my girlfriends. This is not a joke. These, these are all for me. These are all, these are all, these are... You can tell they just cut this shot up in half. And even then, that's not a great take from Anthony. This directing is weird. So with everything going great and the butler from L.A. Noir and Bill and Ted by their side, they suit up for the reunion for Anthony to finally unite with Anthony. Hold on a minute! What? 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 Who did you say was the director of this movie again? I, I don't know, it wasn't- I just know it's not the Smosh dudes. No. I can work this out. And do... absolutely nothing. This is a real dumb and dumber storyline. From inside YouTube. This is gonna turn into some wacky time travel shit. Yes, yes, okay. Of all directions to take this movie... What's up guys, it's Oop, Daz here, too far. but you don't really care. Now, as I'm sure most of you know... My Uncle Keith? <laughs> he died of it. That's Alex Winters! Also, oh my god! Wait, so you're telling me Alex Winters directed this movie? Yeah! Huh, in a way, that makes so much sense. This is right up Bill and Ted's alley, and explains why it's a little out of sync with the Smosh style. And looking him up on IMDb, it looks like maybe films aren't quite his forte, but he's certainly doing alright with documentaries. And look, he's still interested in the YouTube game even now. Well, good for him. This film's still not fantastic. Back to the story, Steve YouTube has now become the pizza guy, and Jenna Marbles has become CEO. I don't know how she got out of there, but we're going with it. And Steve still 
got that sexual harassment gag going. Rich or poor, he commits to the wiener joke. He really likes that cancel culture. One unfunny British accent joke later and it's final reunion time. Everyone loves the duo, that one guy is traumatized after all the Star Wars kid trauma he endured, and Anthony is suddenly never nervous. That was easy. But of course, Anna is no longer interested, loving the different guy he was five years ago. Cringy and all. And so, with a revelation in mind, Anthony takes the stage again, performs that old Pokemon ripoff song again, performs the backflip successfully, and now Anna likes him. Uh, okay. Ian joins predating Fortnite dances before they were a thing, and one final time, Anthony commits manslaughter and nobody cares. It's a happy ending for all. Except the dead guy. Oh, and there's a post credit scene! Ian is getting married to the now named Brad, and it all falls apart because Anthony is spit crying, and, and Ian and Brad both have boners. Ending on a high note. What a strange product this ended up being. I can't tell whether it's because Smosh just doesn't work on a larger scale, or the fact that the two weren't heavily involved in the actual production of the movie or what, but this came out weird. From the poor editing from visuals and audio, like duplicated screaming in places. <laughs> Or how the slapstick style of Smosh was dampened down for broader audiences. This was just disappointing. The premise was kinda cool and quirky, but the writing depth or lack thereof just didn't support all sorts of inconsistencies. Funnily enough, digging into this a tad, I learned that there was a deleted arcade scene with Shane Dawson that had to be cut to avoid an R rating. Wow. But otherwise, this film is kinda bland. Maybe it's because of the corporate jumping through hoops needed to brand YouTube so heavily in their movie. Maybe it was because the smosh magic was lost along the processing. But there were jokes I did like, usually the subtler ones or the bodacious ones. But there's a lot of crap crammed in between it all. This movie was just too safe and not enough smosh ironically. Or maybe too much smosh. Maybe it just wouldn't have translated anyway. At the end of the day, while an intriguing little time capsule, it's clearly very dated now. From the names of the companies to some of the approaches to certain things. Everybody has moved on and the film failed to break the mold of YouTuber movies making it big. There's just a few humorous foreshadowings that were made along the way. $25 haircut, dude. I used to only ever pay like 10. My life is like a rocket ship right now. Mm, go nowhere but up. So with that out of the way, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Next week we've got something from the other series, talking about a strange yet official YouTube channel and one type of content they make in particular. Guess what it is on our Discord. And I'll see you in a bit.